There's a lot that I want to talk to you guys about, so we're gonna make a latte while I do that. I got this latte mix from Muji, and y'all are sleeping on Muji. Like, the food at Muji, at least. I don't know if they have this in the States, but in Japan, they do. They have this instant maple chestnut latte, and this shit, I don't know what they put in it. Probably crack, but it is so good. Like, this instant powder. Put some in the cup, and then I have this little electric kettle thing, and I just heat up water, and you just pour the water into the powder, and then it's done. Like, that's it. I don't know if this is TMI, but... <laughs> Oh my god, he messaged me again. So I... <laughs> <laughs> so I matched with this guy on Bumble, right? And he's very, very cute. And I thought he looked like a foreigner. And so I assumed that he spoke English, but he's speaking to me in Japanese. So I'm like, okay, I guess he doesn't speak English. And then I come to find out, I think he's like half Japanese. And I'm like, okay. And then he asked me on a date. And I know that's not that shocking because it's literally a dating app. However, I have to tell y'all what he said. <laughs> and he's like, how about tomorrow night or Friday night or Saturday night or Sunday all day? This man has three pictures on his Bumble. I need a better look at him. I need a a better look at him three pictures is not gonna do it like i do not want to meet up with someone that i only have three photos of that's just like really scary to me and i also still know really nothing about this man so of course naturally you ask for somebody's instagram so i'm like do you have instagram he's like oh if we get along in person then we can exchange instagram huh he does not have to worry about me i do not want to go on a date with somebody without any sort of like pre-existing knowledge of them like i need a little bit you got to give me a little bit more than your three photos on bumble so i don't think that's gonna happen <laughs> there's another thing that i've really been wanting to talk to you guys about but i don't really know exactly how to go about it because it's something that's really really important to me and really fun for me and really exciting and that is my quote-unquote clothing brand one of my end goals is basically to start my own brand which has proven to be extremely difficult who would have fucking thought and i have a sample of the piece and I am absolutely in love of course I don't really want to show it because I don't know if that's the final product or actually I'm pretty sure that it's not the final product there's more that I want to do to it but it's exciting because I got to hold something that I really want to put out into the world but there's an issue and the issue lies here obviously when creating a brand I want to do something that's very natural for me but I also want to cater to my audience as well and that's where I get really confused about exactly what to do say I release like a hoodie or something I don't know what to put on it. And that's what I've been battling for so long. I have a clear vision of everything else and I have all the logistics worked out and everything. It's really just w exactly what I want to do. Obviously, I don't want to put my fucking name on a hoodie. I don't want to put my face on a hoodie. I don't want to put any ugly graphic on a hoodie. So it's really hard to figure out exactly what I want to do. So if you guys have any ideas of like exactly what you would want from me in terms of like a hoodie. Also, I'd like to be clear that I'm just not selling any fucking hoodie. I have made like an extremely high quality piece with perfect like custom measurements and everything because I don't want to just put out merch. It's not just about like merch to me and like a little cash grab. Like it's something that I'm passionate about and actually want to create quality out of. If you guys buy something from me, I want it to be like literally perfect. So let me know your ideas in the comments or what you guys would want from me because I'm very stumped when it comes to this topic. I've had this sample for quite a while now and I've just been debating different ideas for so long and it's gotten to a point where I just really need to like narrow it down and get the ball rolling because I just want to like put it out already but it takes time and I need the perfect idea and it hasn't come to me yet. So help me out please. One thing I've been really needing to do is simply going to the grocery store. So today I'm going to show you guys what an actual like Japanese grocery store looks like definitely different from America a bit but I just have not been cooking at home like I should I definitely need to just be like cooking at home more and eating out less so I'm finally getting groceries so I can be prepared and also just have like snacks at home because I never have snacks at home and then I have to go to the convenience store to get anything and it's kind of difficult so riddle me this why is it called the convenience store if it's difficult
It's midnight. I need to go to bed. Here's the grocery store. They got a bunch of flowers outside. What is this though? I don't know. Just some snacks. I don't really know where to start. Hello. I just realized I completely forgot a basket. So that would definitely help. Basket acquired. First order of business is definitely iced coffee. Oh, and it's 30% off. One thing I love about Japan is the soy milk options. They have banana soy milk, matcha soy milk, chocolate soy milk. I'm going to get a banana soy milk. I'm also just going to get a regular soy milk because I feel like I just need that. I normally never get anything from the frozen section, but this is kind of calling my name. Yeah, I'm gonna get this. Ooh, I used to always get these tortillas to make breakfast burritos. And yeah, I'm gonna get these. Cause bitch, I love a good breakfast burrito. So bad. They have a lot of like instant pasta and instant soup. I never had corn soup until I moved to Japan. It became one of my favorite foods. It's so good. <sighs> Y'all, this is my favorite section. This is like all the pastries. And they have this here, which is like an apple custard roll. I'm definitely getting this. It's pink. Oh my God, banana cake pie. Look at all the sushi options, y'all. Now we're gonna go downstairs. Yes, this grocery store has it downstairs. If you know me, you know that melon is literally my favorite, specifically the orange ones, like cantaloupe. The fruit in Japan is low-key, like really expensive, but I'm buying it. Like these strawberries are $5, but they look really good. In Japan, in the grocery store, the guy who works like the fish counter is always screaming. And I really wanna show you guys, it's kind of funny because he'll literally just be screaming at no one. <laughs> Y'all, I'm so bad at making pancakes, but I want to buy pancake mix again. They have a lot of different options. They have like the Japanese souffle pancakes too, but I feel like I would make those so badly. Yeah, I don't think I can be trusted with the souffle pancakes. I need one with like super clear instructions. <laughs> Y'all, the music they're playing in here is crazy. Wait, this one seems like really simple. I think I'm going to get this one. Hold up, y'all. I just found all these other gyoza and I'm like, these look better than the other ones and they have more in them. So I feel like I should get one of these. It's also these up here. Here. I'm gonna get these ones and just hope for the best. Okay, y'all, I got my basket full of stuff. I think it's time to check out now. I don't think I need much more. Oh, I'm gonna actually make dinner tonight and not eat out. Okay, y'all, pretty much most of the aisles are just self-checkout. This is where you choose your bag, if you're paying for a bag or if you have your own. Y'all see that? I'm getting all of this for like $20. All of this for $20. Technically, you're supposed to bag your own groceries here, but I don't do that. I just do it at the register. Y'all, I just got back and I realized halfway through that that I left my wallet at home and I had a full basket of stuff. I also left my phone so I couldn't even Apple Pay. So I had to give them my stuff, go home and then come back. And I was kind of freaking out, but I got it. My melon, itadakimasu. Mmm, nothing beats just eating fresh melon. I'm also really curious about this banana kudumi keiki pie. So we're gonna try that too. It looks like a toaster strudel. Mmm. Oh my god. Y'all look so good. Oh yeah, that's good fuck. Lately, I've been feeling like I'm getting into bad habits again. One thing about me is I used to be so terrified of the future. Like, it was really bad. I could not go through one day without breaking down about, like, my future and what I was gonna do. A lot of those feelings subsided, like, in the past year. But recently, I feel like I've been feeling them come back. And it's definitely not a fun feeling. I think there is a healthy aspect of, like, being fearful of the future because it motivates you in some ways. But also if you're too fearful it can be so bad for your mental health and i feel like i've just been like struggling with that one of the things that gave me a lot of security at least for my near future was after starting social media and it becoming like my job it made me so happy because i felt like oh my gosh i finally have something that like i seem to be good at and i seem like i can make an actual living off of this one thing about this job is it really really ebbs and flows like there are so many months where it's so much worse than other months like there's entire months where everything is going like incredibly well and then there's t entire months where everything is going really bad <laughs> it feels like there's really no in between and when it's really good i'm super good and i'm super happy because i feel secure once again but when things are at a dip i feel a lot more anxiety about my future i think i've gotten a bit more comfortable with that over time like in the beginning it was like okay we don't have the aspect of like time to show that like this is okay but now it's been a while and i feel like i've seen a lot of ebbs and flows in the past like year or over a year i kind of try with every low comes another high afterwards. I'm definitely still learning to adapt to that, but, and not even just like career-wise about like my future, I'm also changing visas and I'm graduating soon. That's really scary. Like I've been in school for the past like five years and mind you, I absolutely fucking hate school. I hate it so much, but it gives me a purpose. And so starting to become fearful that after I graduate, I'm gonna lose this sense of purpose. Cause it's like, I have two purposes. It's like my job and then I have school. I get a lot of freedom when I'm not going to school 
school and I get to like travel and whatever and like make videos about that, which makes me really happy. It's a very lucky and also very scary situation to be in. I'm trying to just like remind myself like, girl, I'm gonna have like a whole degree. Like I'm always gonna have something to, you know, like fall back on. But at the end of the day, like I don't wanna work a corporate job. Like I've never wanted that in my life. I've always wanted to just like work for myself and have like the freedom to, you know, travel and just do the things that I want to do. Of course, like that's what everyone wants to fucking do. So the thought of losing that one day is very scary. When I switch visas to stay in Japan after I graduate, that's also another like complicated process that is not guaranteed. As far as I know, it's set up pretty well. Like it's probably going to happen, but it's very scary. The thought that like, oh, immigration, like someone could just have a bad day and be like, no. Ugh. My entire life now is in Japan. I have a whole apartment full of stuff here. I have a cat here. I have friends here. Don't have many ties to the US anymore. Like I've been here for too long. I already lived in New York and I don't want to live there again. And I, I don't want to live in LA necessarily. I mean, it just seems like there's really like nowhere else for me to go. Like I'm a traveling bitch. That's what I do. I travel and I live in Japan. So losing that is definitely quite scary. But I feel like it's important for me to like have these honest conversations, relay them to you guys because I want you guys to know how I feel about things rather than just like hiding all of this behind a curtain. I'm sure a lot of the things that I talk about like no one can fucking relate to, but if you can in like some way, shape or form, like that makes me really happy because I know for me when I watch other people who are going through like similar things that I am or have like similar anxieties, it makes me feel a lot better. It makes me feel a lot less alone. And like one of my biggest goals is to just show people that they can achieve a lot no matter what they come from because if you know like a bit about me, then you know that I don't come from the luckiest beginnings. <laughs> so I think I'm still trying to figure out how to navigate all of these anxieties that I'm having right now, but I hope it gets better soon. <laughs> oh, I need to go to fucking therapy. Oh, I want to go to therapy so bad. That's all. I just wanted to give you guys like a little bit of like a mental update of what, where Ryan's head is at. So yeah. Good morning, y'all. Today is the next day and I feel like my apartment is literally about to blow over because the wind is so bad today. I don't know what it is, but for some reason in Japan, like the wind has been been so bad like every day to the point where if you even carry an umbrella because it's also raining the umbrella will carry you but today I have Japanese class and I'm kind of nervous because I have a presentation in Japanese of course and it has to be memorized I think I'm gonna be okay but I'm kind of nervous and I'm going to an event later I'm excited that I'm going to do something rather than just like rotting at home after I do class so that's good let's do this presentation <laughs> これは日本語の勉強の仕方についてえっとはい毎日日本語を使って少し上手になっていると思いますえっと私は日本に住み続けたいので日本語をたくさん勉強しなければなりません私は子供の時はいつも日本の音楽を聴いていましたフルネシーがすごくいいです。まあもちろん発音、プロナンシエーションもいいんですけど、フルネシーすごくいいですね。ありがとうございます。ライティングとかね、漢字スキルすごくいいとか、まあいろいろありますね。強いところは。ありがと
this. I'm wearing Adidas Sambas, acne jeans, shirt I got at a store in Bali, belt thrifted, flannel thrifted, bag thrifted, glasses are gins, and I can finally go to this event. Yo, we at the event and we got gifts. I got a cap. Got a mug, I think. We think it's a mug in there. Look at this vibe. We get free drink and a free plate. I'm getting excited. Y'all, look at these drinks. I can get this drink and one of these food options. I think I'm gonna get whatever that is. I think it's pistachio. This all looks so good. Y'all, the music was so loud in that event. I could not record shit. So we got our little gift bags. The food was really good though. A little treat. We literally spent like 10 minutes there. Yeah, there's nothing else to do really or anyone to talk to. So we just left. Y'all, we came to my favorite penny store in Japan. I don't even know what it's called, but it's really good. Well, I'm not gonna lie, the candy in Japan is like really bad, but the only place you can get good candy is at actual candy stores. Tea. Okay. <laughs> that was, I think that's the worst thing I've ever seen. That's all.